Hi everyone, this is a lesson on section 4.6, the balance of payments. This is how governments both manage and classify all the money that is both sent overseas and received from overseas. Some countries do this slightly differently. So to counter this, the IB have decided on a common version of the balance of payments that they expect us to all know and use for the course. So we'll go through each of these in detail, but it will be worth it for you to get this down as a, as a concise summary of, of the accounts because you will need to know these. Okay, so make sure you do that. And we call it the balance of payments. So there must be a balance in here. So what happens is that the current account plus the financial account and capital account equal is equal to zero. Uh, we'll get back to that later, but if we take down this, that'll, that'll be there for our notes. We will get it later. So we'll go through all the, all the components. So we'll start with the current account. Um, here's our definition, measure of the flow of funds from the trade of goods and services, net income flows and net transfers. Uh, a common question is, to ask what is what are the components of the current account. So I've seen that quite a bit in paper twos. So it's a four mark question. Um, a lot of people, a basic understanding, they'll, they'll say that it's the trade of goods and services. The more sophisticated understanding will be that it's the net income flows and net transfers. So that's what, that's what differentiates between a, a passing student and a student who's gonna do well. Do really well in the course. Okay, uh, back to what the accounts are all about. The balance of trade in goods. So uh, imports, they're a debit in the current account, so they're a negative because we're sending money out of the country. Money is leaving the country. Uh, and exports, um, for example, the iron ore that we send over to, to China, this is a credit because money is coming into Australia. So it's a credit. So we just need to know whether to donate, denote these as minuses or debits or credits. Uh, some of this can come up in paper three when we work with the numbers, but maybe also paper two these days. Okay, also in the current account is the balance of trade in services, so goods and services. So an import of services, um, occurs generally when we pay for services overseas. So a common example is tourism, right? So when I travel to pay and see this beautiful mosque slash cathedral that's in Cordoba in Spain, it gets entered as a debit in the current account because the money leaves Australia for overseas, right? Um, and an export. So biggest export service by far is education. So think of the international students that come to the school and but more so uh, come to our universities. Counts as an export and that's a credit into the current account. Okay. Another way that money moves in the current account is income. So let's say Apple make profits here in Australia. They're going to send that money back to their shareholders, most of whom would be based in the, in the US. So that's money leaving the country. It's money leave, so it's a debit in the current account. Uh, on the other side, if I own shares in foreign companies like Tesla or Facebook, I receive a share of their profits. So when that money comes into my Australian bank account, it is a credit in the current account. And sometimes money given to people by government happens to cross borders. So we've seen the word transfers before, transfer payments. It's when the government just gives money. They don't buy a good or service, they give money. So sometimes that happens across borders. So for example, uh, my brother-in-law, he's an Australian. He went to study in Spain, in Granada, and the government paid him Oz study. So that, that transfer payments the government makes to some tertiary students. Um, so when this money left Australia, he and went to his bank account in Spain, it was a debit in the current account. Transfer payments also come into Australia. An example of that is a lot of older British people living here receive a pension from the UK government. So it's a transfer payment. 
comes all the way from the UK here and to credit in our current account. So, like I said, a very common question is to identify components of the current account. The four headings we've had here, so trading goods and trading goods, trading services, uh, income and current transfers. That's what they'll be looking for. Now, just to check that we know our debits and credits, let's have a look at this current account data for the country of Bormistan and determine whether it's a current account surplus or a current account deficit and how big that surplus or deficit is. Okay, uh, this is, this should be relatively straightforward. 85 export, 85 million export of goods is a credit, so positive. Minus 48 because imports are a debit. Uh, plus 56, no, uh, plus 79 for exports of services and minus 82 for the imports of those services because that, remember that import money is going out. Um, we've got the income from abroad, from abroad, 56 coming into Bormistan and income payments going out. So it might be, remember, profits might be leaving the country. That's a, a debit. Uh, we've got five for the current transfers coming in and six going out. So it's positive, negative, positive, negative throughout. Um, altogether, that leaves us with a current account surplus of $1 million. So next, yeah, if we get a positive, it's a current account surplus. If we get a negative, it's a deficit. So next we'll look at the capital account. So the capital account is the smallest of the three accounts. We don't really do that much with it, um, but we need to know what it's composed of. So we have capital transfers. This is when capital is just given, you know, transfers. So the most common form is debt forgiveness. Um, that's where the government just cancels some of the debt it is owed. So um, this can happen when we are owed money by developing countries. We might, as a form of development aid to these countries, we might say, look, just we forgive that debt. Don't worry about it. You don't have to re repay it. Um, so that can happen. That's a capital transfer and also uh, investment grants where the government gives money to fund physical capital. Obviously, it's when they that money is crossing country borders is when that happens and then we've got the non-produced and non-financial assets this is really about the purchase of natural resources or purchase of rights to to natural resources such as these listed here um, but really in general all you're expected to know about the capital account is what the components are. So really a definition um, will get you most of the way there. So capital account measures inflows minus outflows of funds for capital transfers and transactions in non-produced non-financial assets. Okay, we will move to the financial account now. This one uh, is a bit more important, a lot more important. Uh, foreign direct investment, we learned this term recently, so um, if you need to, go back to your notes and provide a definition for me. Okay, um, thank you. So this is when foreign direct investment is when a firm invests in another country, usually by setting up an operation there. So an example is bonds, um, buying factories in Asia to make their underwear. So that's foreign direct investment. Uh, we also have portfolio investment. It's very similar. It's investing in companies from other countries, but as shares of a, of a country, um, shares of a company. Um, so if a firm, so if, for example, um, foreigners buy shares in BHP, right? Um, that's inward portfolio investment. Now, if a firm buys more than 10% share of a company, we actually d call that foreign direct investment. The difference being that if you're only more than 10% of a company, you're 
that's going to be a long-term investment. And remember, that's in our definition, that it's a long-term investment um, in another country. Um, a few shares here and there, they can be bought one day, sold a week later. It's considered more short-term. But if you're buying 10% or more, that's really a, a long-term investment. You want some form of control of that, of that company. Okay, next is reserve assets. That's somewhat a complicated one. These are assets that the central bank holds of foreign currencies. So if we look at the data we have here, we've got the current account is in deficit uh, by $5 million, right? Um, therefore, we need the financial and capital accounts to equal positive $5 million, which they do here, right? Um, if we ignore reserve assets, however, then we don't have that that positive five million, we've got positive three million. So we would need two million more in these accounts. What the central bank therefore might do is they're going to buy, um, sell some of their foreign currencies to buy their own currency, right? So the weird part about this, and it's a little bit confusing, is that when they lose their foreign currency, it actually counts as a credit. This is because there's an inflow of money in of Australian dollars, really, an inflow of Australian dollars into the country. Um, and a negative in the reserve assets means that the central bank is buying foreign currency reserves with its own currency. Okay, it's a little bit confusing this part. So we might have to, we will have to talk about that a bit more in class. Um, okay, and the last component of the financial account is official borrowing. This is just uh, when the government borrows from overseas. So as the borrowed money flows into the country, it's a credit into the financial account. And when governments lend to foreign governments, it's money flowing out. So it's a, it's a debit. Okay. Now, why is there a balance in the balance of payments? So you got to think about the currency. All of the inflows are really demand for the currency. Remember, it has to get converted to Australian dollars. So all credits create demand for the currency. All outflows are supply of the currency. Because remember, the money is flowing overseas. We're buying different currencies. So we're supplying more of our own currency. So think of it that way. Um, to get an equilibrium value of currency, demand has to equal supply, right? This is like we draw these equilibria, demand equals supply. So it follows that for the balance of payments, credits equal debits and deficits must equal surpluses. So all the credits in the current account must be matched by deficits, by debits in the financial account. All deficits in the current account must be matched by surpluses in the financial and capital accounts. Now, when we have a current account deficit, we're actually consuming beyond the, the PPC, if you think about it. So current account deficit means we're buying more imports than we're selling in exports. So we're spending more than we're earning. Therefore, we need inflows in the financial and capital accounts to pay for that all that spending on imports that we're doing, right? Um, so a current account deficit is going to be matched by a financial and capital account surplus. A current account surplus means that we consume within our PPC and we earn more than we spend. So this surp we get we get a surplus of funds from our imports and exports, right? So that means that we buy assets overseas. There's there's all this foreign exchange that we have, we can use that to, to buy assets from overseas. Okay, the slide here really sums up the ideas. So current account deficit, exports are less than imports. So the country, how do they pay for all those imports? They have to bring in money from the financial account. And there's an example there. And if we have a current account, exports are greater than imports. So what happens with all that export income? 
we get a financial account deficit, we buy assets overseas.